the Word of God, which is the foundation for living, from Westminster Presbyterian Church, 20 6th Avenue Southwest, with Reverend Joseph Reed. And now, following these announcements, Reverend Reed. Good morning. I am Eugenia Henry, a member of the Westminster Presbyterian Church family. Thank you for tuning in today to hear God's word. Please continue to join us each Sunday morning from 1015 until 1030 here on WATV 900 AM. And now, here are today's announcements. Our Sunday school begins at 9.30 each Sunday morning. Join us for a lively discussion. Mrs. Bonetta Wyatt is our superintendent. Our weekly Bible study class meets each Monday at 5.30 p.m. and is led by our pastor, the Reverend Joseph Reed. Please know, you are always welcome to worship with us each Sunday. Our service begins promptly at 11 a.m. and ends at approximately 12 noon. Following a musical selection, the Reverend Reed will present today's...
Let us pray together. Lord, help us celebrate life in this world as we look forward with hope and gratitude to the next. Amen. Amen. From the book of Corinthians, we have been steadily on that book, the 15th chapter of the book of Corinthians, a very important letter from Paul to the church at Corinth. There were people in the church at Corinth who did not believe that Jesus had risen from the dead. Paul begins to state his case. He lays it out clearly. That if Jesus had not risen from the dead, then all of what we're doing is in vain. And then he goes on to talk about the resurrection of the dead in general. And then he breaks it down to the resurrection of the body. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in a subsequent message. He was not talking about the physical body. He was talking about the spiritual body. But in order for us to rise from the dead, we have to have a spiritual body. And we're going to talk about that in a little more detail in our message today. From the scripture that was read, verse 21, from the 15th chapter. For since death came through a man, since death comes for us all, since death came from humanity, not a man, anyone. Since death came from a man, it says, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. He's talking about Jesus Christ, who was human and became divine. A man was telling his friend, my grandfather predicted in advance the very year in which he was going to die. What's more, he knew the exact month he was going to die. He knew the precise day he was going to die. He even knew the time of day that he was going to die. And he was right on every count. That's amazing, said the friend. How did he know all of that? And his friend whispered to him, the judge told him. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, none of us will hear from a judge before we go, but go we must, all of us, and the wonderful thing about going for us as a Christian is it is a physical existence that will lead to a transition to a much more powerful spiritual existence. That's what we believe. That's my story. And I'm going to stick to it. Please join me as I speak to you on the subject, moving from death to eternal life. Moving from death to eternal life. We ministers would have nothing to do if people just died and went on and nothing more was said. But each time you gather, in large numbers, by the way, we gather more for transitions than any other service. When we gather in large numbers, we gather to hear the minister say, naturally, good things about the deceased. But more importantly, we gather to hear the minister declare that death is not the end of life. That's encouraging to me. I don't know about you. Here's the message. We move from death to eternal life in two ways. One, by embracing 
the cross of humanity. As humans, we all have a what? Cross to bear, just as Jesus did. And two, by relying on the truth of Jesus Christ's divinity. Again, today is part two of a five-part series leading to Pentecost. This is the fifth Sunday of what, somebody tell me? It's on the back of your bulletin. The fifth Sunday of Easter. This is the fifth Sunday of Easter. A lot of us think that Easter is over with. When we celebrate it on Easter Sunday, we put our new clothes away, and all the regular folks start showing back up at church. <laughs> But Easter leads to Pentecost, where we receive the Holy Spirit that allows us to be able to transition from this life to the next. The colors on this pyramids will change. Somebody tell me what color? The red. Thank you. On the 8th of June, as you've heard Ms. Gibson speak about, when we'll take up a big offering, bring your checkbooks, this would change to red. And it is representative of the Holy Spirit being in that place. Make sure you don't miss that Sunday. Two weeks ago, we shared two ways of securing our salvation as the first power of the resurrection of Christ. We said to secure our salvation, we must see the source of that salvation as the resurrection of Christ from the dead that we celebrated on Easter. And in that resurrection, we said we must see our own. We must see our own resurrection in that resurrection of Jesus Christ. This week, we explore the second power of Jesus' resurrection, which is to move us from death to eternal life. The message of this, this, this whole series is there is tremendous power for living in understanding that through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are enabled to receive eternal life. You've got to be glad about that. Life is so precarious. Life is so transitory. Life is so temporal and temperamental. Every time I get on the highway, I'm scared. I know I said that incorrectly, but that's exactly how I feel. It may not be from some uh, unnecessary driving that I'm doing. It might be for some crazy driving that what? Somebody else is doing. I find myself driving more defensively lately than ever before. Again, the message of this series is that there's tremendous power in understanding that through Jesus Christ, we are enabled to receive eternal life no matter what happens to us. These are the essential facts of the gospel. These are the facts that Paul was trying to relate to the church at Corinth, that if Jesus Christ did not raise, rise from the dead, there is no point. I want to make that point to you. If Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, there's no point. And if his death doesn't give you an indication for your own life, then there's no point in being here. I want you to read, as an exercise, the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians for yourself. To hear when ministers take that last part at a funeral and they talk about, oh, death, where's your what? <coughs> of your sting. That's what they, they get it from this 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Because the victory that Jesus achieved over death is what leads us to want to be reborn in Christ. This rebirth 
is because he was resurrected. This rebirth provides the authority to make us feel safe for our own deliverance from death. But there's a problem. And the problem is that we are not willing to follow Christ to eternal life in order to be saved. We want cheap grace. And there's no such thing as cheap grace. Jesus Christ paid the price, and so must we at some level. So how, how do we move from death to life? Two ways. First, we must be willing to take up our cross and follow Jesus. Jesus was clear on this point, scripture after scripture after scripture. Whoever wants to be my disciple, he said, what? Must deny themselves and take up the cross and follow me. Not your brother, your cousin, your mama, your daddy. No, follow Jesus Christ. Jesus went from what? Death to life. And he was reborn. He said, follow me. Then he says, whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Then he goes on to say, and whosoever does not carry that cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Then he says, if I want to remain alive until I return, what is it for you to do but follow me? These words are the power of the resurrection that leads us from death to life. Write this in your heart. Follow me. Not your job, not your boss, not your mate, although men, we might have to follow them a little ways. <laughs> not money. Not power, not prestige, not your bank balance. Because we're going to do what? All that's going to be what? All that's going to be left. That beautiful car is going to be here for somebody else to what? Enjoy, hopefully, when you're gone. These are the words that lead us through the cross, our own cross, to our salvation. This cross, our cross, means we must trust in Christ no matter what happens. Last, in order to move from death to life, we must comprehend the truth that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. What is that truth? That Jesus was every bit human, but he was wonderfully divine. He was humanity in the flesh, but he was God Almighty. He was the source of physical life and death. But through Jesus Christ, he overcame death to allow us a chance for eternal life. <laughs> God's defeat of death through his birth, life, death, and resurrection of his son gave us an opportunity, a bridge to eternal life. Because Jesus overpowered death we are able to live eternally in him and with him. In other words, the truth of Christ's victory over death is our way from moving from death to eternal life. And listening to the word of God, which is the foundation for living from the Westminster Presbyterian Church, 20, 6th Avenue Southwest with Reverend Joseph Reed and now until next time let the church say Amen